to the Father through the Son whose name is Yahushua, in him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints that's watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's grab John chapter uh, 14, verse 7. This is John chapter 14, verse 7. How you say John's name in Hebrew? Yahuhanan or Yah? I think it's Yahuhanan. Yahuhanan. Fourteen what? Yeah, I think you got that sound in there. Yahuhanan. Nah. <laughs> like popcorn. Fourteen seven. This is John chapter fourteen verse seven. <clears throat> like I ain't got enough light over here. No, no, we got plenty. You know what I'm saying? Actually. Gotta be able to pick up pick up all my Hebrew skin coat. You know what I'm talking about? It, it ain't hard to pick yours though. Yeah, of course it's not hard. You Everybody know. You only got so much. <coughs> I have plenty. I <laughs> have plenty. <laughs> Why you look at your head? I didn't even notice it looks like look at it. <laughs> It's John chapter 14, verse 7. Watch what the book say. <clears throat> if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. He said, if ye ain't known me, you would have known my father also. How you going to know the son, you don't know the father? Keep going. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Mm -hmm. Philip said unto you, unto him, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father and it sufficeth us. You know what, this ain't what I wanted, but this will work. What is that? That's John chapter 14, verse 7? Yeah. You know what I wanted? John chapter 7, verse 14. But this will work. We'll take this instead. This is John chapter 14, verse 7. Watch this. This thing even better. Yahushua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and ye yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He said, I've been here the whole time, and you haven't known me? He said, Philip asked him, he said, show us the Father. Yahushua responded, he said, I've been here all this time, and you haven't known me? Right? Let's see. Keep going. He that understand asked. what he said. He said, show us the Father. Right? Show us the Father. Right? The man responds. He said, well, you don't know me? So essentially, what is he saying at that point? I am the Father. <laughs> but these people running around, you know what they're going to tell you? Trinity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what they're going to tell you? This is what they're going to tell you. What's the Trinity? They're going to say, it's three separate persons. That's all they, they always going to throw that separate, that would mess them up. Three separate persons in one. A tr then they're going to throw something new in. A triune God. Triune. Ain't nothing to try. That, that thing don't even make sense. Not even you put the Greek words together. We can, we can get, look, it's a, we can get a way further than we've ever gotten. If we just trust the book, we go with the book. Set. We ain't got to come up with no e extra fancy words to try to explain stuff we don't understand. When we don't understand something, guess what we say? We don't understand it. <coughs> when we went over, we did, we did what, se uh, se seven weeks of Revelations? When we finished the Bible, we did seven weeks of Revelations. We didn't touch everything in Revelations. There were many times it, during, during the course of going over Revelations, I was like, I don't really know what that means. I ain't about to tell you, I ain't about to go into that because I don't know what it means. We read some stuff, and like, yeah, this, that, another. We don't know what that means. It's all right to say you don't know what stuff means. Somebody out there going to know what it means because the Most High God going to give it to them. That's how the Most High God set stuff up. He set it up. This whole book, we got a whole book. It's all written by one person? 
Absolutely not. You let these you let these confused people tell them. Uh, <laughs> right? They think one white man. It is one white man who wrote it. And he is a slave master. <laughs> Guess when he wrote it? Right when Harry and Tubman escaped. That's what they think. And they might not have that thing work. They put it together for the slave. Like, boy, you know how long the thing been around? Talking about some darn put it together for the slave. In America? You crazy. You know how long this stuff been around? Don't nobody check them on that stuff. But you look at it, did one person write it? It's many people that came. So that means one person had this piece of information. One person had this piece of information. Some of it, you had, it was written at the same time. You got some of it, you got Moses, and then Moses died, and then you got Joshua, right? So it wasn't written at the same time. <clears throat> but then you got some of it, it was written at the same time. First Kings, right? Chronicles, Samuel. All that stuff, all in the same time period. That's all happened around the same time, right? Then you got, you know what I'm saying, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. You know what I'm saying? They cross over. Right? So you look at this, you have different people having different prophecy, different information. So we know how God works. Like, this stuff shouldn't be foreign to us. We know how God works. It's okay for me to say I don't know. Because I know the most high God. By me saying I don't know, he introduced me to somebody who will know, who will teach me. That's going to happen. Right? He introduced me to somebody who's going to teach me. Guess what's not going to happen, though? If I pretend like I know everything and don't leave no room for God to teach. Right? We don't have to come up with stuff to try to explain stuff we don't know. You don't understand how God is one. But then there's also a verse saying, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> that's where they come up. They're like, mm, but that's three. But God is one. How do you explain that? I know. Trinity. That's a matrix character. You can cut that out. Right? Let the matrix character have a name. Why do you want to take their stuff? Right? What we want to look at is, this is the truth. Let's just rock with it. Did the book say Trinity? No. Do it describe anything like Trinity? No. You know what it described? This man is the father. Right? That got that. that after that, you're done. You know it ain't nothing separate about it. Somebody, who got a, you got your phone in your hand. Do me a favor. Google Trinity for me. Because sometimes people be thinking I'm lying. I don't, and I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to do nothing about lying on, on Christians or nothing like that. It's not, whatever, if I'm lying on Christians, that thing don't make no sense. <clears throat> right? What I'm trying to do is identify what's happening. Like, I identify, I look at it. This is what's happening. This is why we've been confused. Right? And if it's the truth, then let's rock with the truth. If it's not, then all right. You know what I'm saying? Correct me. What is that? Say the Christian God has, has one God in three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God in three persons. How do you have that? Huh? That's their definition. What is that? Who, who gave that definition? Because that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? You say you, say you get that thing from Google. Is Google a Christian? Yeah, that's how Christian going to come. That ain't even a Christian definition. You got to go find Baptist.com or something. See what Baptist.com describes. <laughs> well, I'm saying, like, that word, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, whoever made up that word, like, that's, like, really what it means? What I'm saying. No, no, that's a good point. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, like if we go... Yeah, so dictionary.com might not be a Christian organization. You know what I'm saying? So they might not even know what they're talking about. They ain't got no Baptist.com or nothing, you know what I'm saying? Pentecostal.org. <laughs> Super Jesus loving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus and that's all. Ain't that how I be talking? You know what I'm saying? Jesus and nothing else. Jesus plus nothing. You know what I'm saying? They love saying stuff like that. I, be like, I don't even know what that means. I don't think you do either. <laughs> Jesus plus nothing. You ain't seen nothing on there? That's all right. We'll look for Christian.com later. This is uh, this is uh, John chapter 14. What is it? Verse 8? Verse 9? Uh, verse 9. Verse 9. This is John chapter 14, verse 9. He said, I'm the father. Watch this. And Yahshua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Mm-hmm. He that has that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Mm -hmm. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Uh -huh. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, He does the works. Uh -huh. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, uh -huh. or else believe me for the very works' sake. Uh -huh. Verily I say unto you. He said, Verily I say unto you. 
he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Uh huh. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Uh huh. And whosoever and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, mm -hmm. that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Mm -hmm. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you do what? If ye love me, keep my commandments. That's the end of that thing there. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, mm -hmm. that he may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but yet, but ye know him, for he dwells with you, and shall be in you. Mm -hmm. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Mm -hmm. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. Mm -hmm. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Mm -hmm. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. He made that thing very clear. <laughs> Book very clear. Very clear. He said, the one that keep my commandments, that's the one. So who loved God? Right? I mean, it's, we spend a whole lot of time killing time. I know, but everybody make mistakes. But let me tell you something. God know my heart. And guess what God know about their heart? That he love them. That was that. I mean, you let them tell that's what God know about their heart. That he that they they love them some God. Most high God whole time, he's saying, let, let me help y'all out. Did he start with barely, barely? Whenever we hear that barely, barely, you know what the most high God trying to tell us? <clears throat> Pay attention. Somebody going to get this wrong. Pay attention. Let me help y'all out. Right? He's saying, barely, barely. And then he go on, and he gets to talking about, listen, the ones who keep my commandments, that's the ones that love me. You, If you ever confused about whether you love me or not, let me let you know, the ones that keep my commandments, those are the ones that love me. And guess what's going to happen to the ones that love me? They're going to be loved by my father. Right? He give us the roadmap. Now it's up to us. Right? Once you put that roadmap out there, it's like, eh. That's not the same what I heard when I when I stood up in the Christian church. All right? When the pastor stood in the front, he pulled out the chairs, and he said, won't you come? All right? Won't you come? Come on down. There's somebody in this section. There's somebody in that section. All right? You're going through a lot of things. Everybody close their eyes. Let's pray. All right? Come on down. When that happened, we have a different idea. We feel this emotional. We walk down there. We sit down. And they tell us, no matter what you do, God will love you. Right. And then when we hear the truth, it's no longer attractive because it's been robbed from us by lies. That's what we have to clean up. Some people, this ain't the life for them. Right. Some people, you know, what I'm saying you throw it out there and they just like, mm, yeah, it sounds good. Not going to happen, though. Keep all its commandments. Mm, <coughs> I don't know. That weed smoke kind of nice. Right. So you look at these things and it's just not for them. And that's OK for them. You know what I'm saying? They're going to burn in a nice little hell for them. It's burn. It's good. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, it's right for that to happen. Exactly how it's going to happen. But for some people, they're going to hear this, and they've never been exposed to it. And they've been in these Christian churches, and they've been searching for something, and they feel empty, and they keep going, and they keep beating themselves up because in part of them, they feel guilty because they keep sinning, and they're tired of going back to the same church and hearing the same message, and it feel good for the moment, and then they turn around and send it, and they don't feel like it's right, and they go back to that church, and they're trying to get some deliverance, and it still don't feel right, and they ask their pastor because they haven't been feeling right for the three years that they've been going there, and they pass and tell them, it's going to be all right, or just pray, or just trust God, right, or just be still. And that's the most of it they get told. Right? <coughs> and it still don't work. They still feel guilty. Some people, they never get comfortable in sin. Those are the ones that the Most High God is looking for. Right? We always relate it to a basketball. Like, imagine a basketball game. Like a street ball game. You know what I'm saying? You in a street ball game, who gonna win the game? The biggest dude or the little dude? The biggest dude. Every time. The biggest person is gonna win in the street ball game. You know why? Ain't no rule. I'm gonna take the ball. I'm gonna take that thing right to the crib. And if you try to take it to the crib, guess what I'm going to do to you? Foul. Who going to call it? We don't call them things. Boy, you better get up and play. So now I got to try. I got to be, I, I got to ace all my jumpers if I want to win. Otherwise, the bigger guy who's bigger than me, he going to win.
Do I enjoy playing basketball like that? No. Basketball is not fun playing against a bigger dude at that point. But then guess if somebody come in here, right? Somebody come in and say, you know what? We put rules on this basketball game. Who going to be happy about it? Me. Because I've been losing. I've been getting my butt kicked because he's been cheating. But how the dude that been cheating going to feel about it? He'd be like, no, that thing. I'll just go play down the street then. We can put rules over here. That's how the most high God setting this thing up. It's the people that are comfortable. People that are comfortable with this lawless stuff, they good. They good. Once you start introducing laws and commandments and restrictions and all that, that's the one that will be like, mm -mm, you legalistic. Right? You trying to let God, I mean, God got to do the work. You trying, you trying to save yourself. You self-righteous. Right? And they make us feel guilty for trying to do what the most high God told us to do. That's exactly what a cheater would do. All right? We ain't coming here to cheat. We want to play by rules. We just been tired. We getting pushed around this whole time because there ain't been no rule. Nobody set up rules for us. Now we got a man that has set up rules for us and people don't want to hear it. All right? Y'all can keep cheating. Most high God going to come and set this thing up all together. And guess what will happen? When the rule comes, guess who's going to win? The ones saved. The ones that, that walk with them. What were we talking about last week? Who is that? Uh, let me see. Using numbers. What was the last thing we read? Numbers 20 and 21. This was, uh, I think it was Serpent. Ah, right. Serpent. Yeah. So we talked about how Moses was in the wilderness <laughs> with the people. And uh, the people rebelled against God yet again. Then the snakes went out. Remember the fiery snakes went out, bit them, they had poison, started to kill the folk. But the Most High God said after they, after they, they you know, they pray, cried out to him. Most High God said, you know what, Moses, go ahead and make a golden serpent. I mean, a brass serpent. And then when the people look on that serpent, they'll be healed. And we talked about how Yahushua was like, I'm just like that serpent, All right? John three sixteen. That's what that was talking about. God so loved the world. A lot of people think. God loved the world so much. No, no, no. God loved the world like so. But he, he loved the world just like he loved Mo, loved the children of Israelites, um, children of Israel in the wilderness, right? When Moses lifted up that brass serpent, right? So after that, the people went on in chapter twenty-one to fight against uh, to fight against uh, Sion, king of. No, nah, it wasn't Sion, was it? Yeah. Was it Sion? Um, oh, yeah, Sion. You sure? Yeah. That's what they say right now? All right, so let's read that thing one more time. Sihon, king of the Amorites. This is, uh, this is chapter 21, verse 1. Just a quick verse, recap. Verse 21. Chapter 21, verse 1. Yeah, chapter 21, verse 21 starts the war. And what does verse 1 say? Verse 1 is when King Arid the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard that. That's what I'm talking about. What's his name? King Arid. Yeah. So King Arid. Right? We went and we got against King Air. And watch what happened. Keep going. <clears throat> and when King Eret, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. Right? So King Er heard about, remember, we sent up 12 spies to spy out the Canaanite's land. King Er heard about that thing later. He was like, they sent some spies up here? Okay, we're going to do something about that. So we, he went out, he went to go fight against us. Right? This right after we rebelled. But we, we devoted, keep reading, watch this. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. So he said, we, we looked at him, we like, oh, he going to come and get us? All right, Most High God, if you let us win this, we'll utterly destroy his cities. Right? We'll get rid of them. Because we know that the Most High God plan, remember, the only reason the Most High God got us going this way is for what? To remove the Amorites out of their land. Just to judge people. Remember, he told Abraham before any of this happened, he said, there's going to come a time that y'all going to be captive in another people's land and then after that I'm going to judge the Amorites but not yet because the iniquity of the Amorites is not full 
right? So now he's letting them out. So they already know the whole purpose is we got to get these Amorites out. We got to get these Canaanites out of here, right? So they're looking like, okay, God don't want them here. All right, God, I'll tell you what. We'll take care of this group of them right now. You know what I'm saying? If you just let us win this thing, we'll, we'll completely and utterly destroy them. Because that's what God wanted. Well, the most high God let us do it. Then we jump on down. Verse 21, you said? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And this is important before we get to the next <laughs> chapter, right, to kind of understand, because it's always important to understand, like, the context of why, why stuff is playing out. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. Mm -hmm. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we bypass thy borders. All right? So we made a deal. We was like, look, let, let, let us just pass through. We ain't going to take that. And we're not trying to go through. I mean, just let us just, you know what I'm saying, get straight shot. We just don't want to have to walk all the way around. You know what I'm saying? Just let us get straight through. Just let us through, please. Let's see what he said. <clears throat> and Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border. He said, nah, y'all good. All right, keep going. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness and came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. All right, so he came against us and he attacked us. We asked that he go through. We said no. Sihon was like, all right. And then he came in and he got us. Right? He started, to, he started to fight with us. Let's see what happened. Let's see what the results were. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword. We got that butt. And possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabbok. And then we took it to Arnon land. Even unto the children of Ammon. For the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities. And Israel dwelt, dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites in Heshbon and in all the villages thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites who had fought against the former king of Moab and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. Wherefore they, that, wherefore they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of, of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It has consumed Ar of Moab and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab, thou art undone, O people of Chemosh. All right, so we look and we see... That's two kings that we didn't took out, right? Back to back. You know what I'm saying? We took out two nations, two little, two little countries at least, not nations. But you know what I'm saying? Two little countries, we took them out, right? Back to back. Now let's look at chapter, chapter 22. Watch this. Who heard of Balaam before? It's chapter 22. We're going to learn about Balaam. <coughs> Most I still let them live in a few cities, even though they couldn't go into the land. You know, he gave them a little something. Yeah, he gave us the, the borders. Let all this, all this that we taking now, ends up becoming Israel, right? The Canaan, it's not Canaanite land that we taking. It's Canaanites that rule over this stuff, but it's not Canaanite land. This is this is Moabite land, right? Because we kind of tinkering around the edges right now. So we tried to go through Edom. Edom wouldn't let us go through. You know what I'm saying? But if we, have, if we eventually get through, then we go to the Moabites. Let's see if I can draw this thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's something like, you know what I'm saying? It's something like this. You know what I'm saying? And it go up like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, And so all this is like the Egypt area. You know what I'm saying? And down here, you got, you know what I'm saying? You got like, you got like what you got? You got like a river going like right here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the little peninsula. So you got, you know what I'm saying? Like Midian right here. Then you got, uh, you got like Edom right here, you know what I'm saying? And then all right here is the Canaan land. So this is Canaan, you know what I'm saying? This is what we're going to take over. And then on this side, you got Ammon up here, and you got the Moabites having all this land right here. You got Edom right here. So this is all the different sections. We tried to go, we, get, we came, we coming from around this area, across the Red Sea, we over here, then we come up right here, right? Edom ain't going to let us through. We come up. Sihon ain't going to let us through. He come and fight us. He fight us back down here somewhere. We take his land. You know what I'm saying? So now we pushing through the Moabites land. You know what I'm saying? We kind of going up. Because remember, when we get there, when we get to the book of Joshua, we going to cross at the river Jordan. You know what I'm saying? And the Jordan is up this way. So that means we came all the way to the side, and we got to cross over into the land. And that's where, you know what I'm saying, like Hebrew, the word Hebrew means crossing over. 
You know what I'm saying? So we come all the way over here. We got to cross over yet again <clears throat> through uh, through the, the River Jordan. So that means we came up the side and then, you know what I'm saying, went through the Moabites land and we're going to end up going through the Ammonites land too. You know what I'm saying? But right now we're dealing with the Moabites. It's chapter 22, verse 1. Watch what it say. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side of Jordan by Jericho. Mm -hmm. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. All right, so Balak, the son of Zippor, <coughs> he saw all that the children of Israel did to who? The Moabites. I mean, Amorites. The Amorites. So he heard about it. He heard about it. He like, these rowdy Negroes, they came up here and they started getting it all he did. He said, oh, man. So that's what he's thinking. We just took out two kings and they people. Back to back. And we coming up near him. He don't know the backstory. He don't know that they attacked us. Right? He don't know all this different stuff. He don't know that they attacking us. All he know is two kings that used to run stuff is out of there. And these boys is coming my way. So let's see what Balak, the, the son of Zippor, did. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. Look, the Moabites were sore afraid of the people. Why? Because they were many. Because there was a whole lot of them boys. Let's hear about it. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are around about us. Like a cow, huh? As the ox licks up the grass of the field. Who was that? What happened? Is he, is he sick? Keep him away from my kids. They yeah, gonna get sick too. Here go. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, mm -hmm. to call him, saying, Behold, there's a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they covered the face of the earth. All right, so the Moabites <laughs> sent the message to the sons of their people. And there was a man named Balaam, the son of Baal. Right? So they sent the message to him. And let's see what, before they do that, so let's talk about the Moabites, right? So the Moabites sent uh, a message to the sons of their people. So that means Balaam was related to the Moabites. He is a Moabite, right? So... The more, like, who are the more? Go to Genesis 19. We read this before, but let's just remind ourselves of where the Moabites came from so we don't get the wrong idea. All right? Canaanites, when we talk about the Canaanites, they came from Ham. All right? So you remember three sons. You have Noah. He had three sons. You have one son named Ham, one son named Japheth, and one son named Shem. Okay? When we talk about Hebrews... We came from Shem. When we talk about most of the Africans, they came from Ham. When we talk about most of the, 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 uh, the white folks, they came from Japheth. Right? So those are the three sons, and we kind of split. The Shem people, the Shemites, you know what I'm saying, are like the Arabs, the black people, you know what I'm saying, some of the black people at least. The Hamites is some of the other black people, and then there's theory saying that, you know, other types of people is in Ham too, but it's hard to to know for sure, but for sure, most of the black Africans are Hamites. You know what I'm saying? So you have all these different people coming from these these three lines. Not the Negroes. <laughs> That's funny that they put that in there. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? So you have all these different people coming from these three different lines, right? The three different lines, they come from them. Now, we are dealing with Canaanites at first, Amorites. Those come from Ham. Not our people, not really related to us. You know what I'm saying? Not closely related to. Then we talk about the Moabites and the Ammonites. Well, those people are closer, closely related to us. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 19. Give me verse 27. This Genesis chapter 19, verse 27. This is right after Sodom and Gomorrah. <coughs> Most High God set everything on fire. They remember Lot escaped. His wife looked back, turned to salt. This is that story. This is right after that. This is verse 27. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as smoke of a furnace. Mm -hmm. 
And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. Mm -hmm. And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoar. Mm -hmm. And he dwelt in a cave and his two daughters, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. All they saw was this whole land that they lived in got destroyed. They might have had young husbands and all that stuff, and they didn't come with them. And all that just got set on fire, and most of got destroyed. It. In their mind, they like, the world is over. Right? So guess what they want to have happen? Look at this. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Right? They saying, we might not have a chance, to keep our father's seed going. Let's get our pops drunk and then we'll lay with them. That way we could at least have some babies in his name. They thought they were doing something noble, just sick in the mind. Right? So they got they got them drunk. Watch this. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Mm -hmm. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down or when she arose. Uh -huh. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Uh -huh. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. He called him what? Moab. <clears throat> so that's where Moab came from. Right? That was the offspring of Lot and one of his daughters. What's the next one? And unto the uh, the same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. Mm -hmm. And the younger she also bare a son and called his name Ben Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So the Ammonites and the Moabites <clears throat> come from Lot. Lot was the nephew of Abraham. So same people. All right? Same people. In a technical sense. They could be considered Hebrews. Technically, because Lot was Hebrew. Right? In a technical sense. Now, in a literal sense, you know what I'm saying, we don't really consider them Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? But, in a technical sense, we're the same people. You know what I'm saying? Came from, came from the same people. Our, father, right? our father's brother. Exactly. All right? Our father's nephew. Let's grab, uh, let's go back to uh, Numbers chapter 22. <coughs> Go ahead, just pick me up back in like verse 4. In Numbers chapter 22. I'm going to jump back up to about verse 4. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company look up all that are round, that are round about us. So it's the Moabites. They're stressing out. They're like, man, they're going to come up here and take everything we got. Right? And so the Moabites stressing out. Let's hear about it. As the ox licks up the grass of the field, uh -huh. and Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time, mm -hmm. he sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people. So he sent a message to Balaam, keep going, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Mm -hmm. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. All right? So he said, We can't take them. So. Put a curse on them for us, Balaam. Send the message to Balaam and said, put a curse on them for us. This is what Balaam said. Peradventure I shall prevail that we might smite them, and that I may drive them out of this land. Uh-huh. For I wot that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom you cursed is cursed. All right? They say, Balaam, when you curse somebody, they curse. When you bless somebody, they bless. So we need you to do this, because you got some power in the stuff you be saying. All right? Balaam was the man of people. <coughs> Let's hear about it. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. Mm -hmm. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him with the words of Balak. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as Yahuwah shall speak unto me. Right, so Balaam, when they brought that message on to him, Balaam was like, all right, y'all go ahead and sleep to here tonight. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to wait, and when, when the Most High God speak to me, I'll tell you what he said. Right? Keep going. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? 
And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent me un sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covers the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Come now, curse me them, perhaps I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refused to give me leave to go with you. All right? So Balaam told the people, I spoke to God. He said, I can't do it. So he sent the people. He said, go ahead, all the rest of you Moabites, go ahead and go on back home. All right? So sent them home. Watch this. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. So they went back to Balak. Balak is the king. They went back to the king. They said, you know what? He, he don't want to do it. Balaam don't want to do it. All right? Let's hear about it. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. Right, so he sent more prestigious people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, imagine like going the first time, and it's just like some regular like government officials. You know what I'm saying? Then the next time, they sent Obama. You know what I'm saying? That thing serious that time. So he sent some more official people. Let's see it. And they came to Balaam and said unto him, Thus says Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote thee unto every great honor, and will do whatsoever you say unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Mm -hmm. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak. This is what Balaam said back. So yeah. Balak the king, he going back to him, he's like, listen, I really need you to do this. All right? I'll, I'll, pro I'll provide whatever you need. Just let me know. But I really, really need you to do this for me. So Balaam, he going to come back and watch what he said. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak. If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to He's, do less or more. He said, even if you gave me a whole your whole house and you filled it with silver and gold, I still wouldn't be able to go beyond what the Most High God said. <clears throat> right? A lot of people heard about Balaam. Balaam get a bad rap. Yo, Balaam is that. Sound like so far, Balaam is strictly obeying God. He said, I ain't saying nothing to y'all until I talk to God first. He y'all go to sleep, I'm going to go holler at God. He heard from God. God said, don't do it. He came back and told him, look, I can't do it. Y'all might as well go home. They went home. He sent some more people to him. Balaam got the message. He was like, listen, I want y'all to know before you even waste your breath, I can't go further than what the Most High God say. Most High God tell me to do it, I'll do it. He tell me not to do it, I can't do it. I don't care what you give me. You can to give me your whole house and you can fill it with silver and gold. That's not going to stop. I can't do it with something that God say don't do. So, so far... The man seemed like a very strict, he, he obedient to the most high God, as far as we know. Right? Let's hear about that. Let's keep going. Now, now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me. Uh-huh. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto you, that shall you do. Right? So now the second time they came, he told them, listen, I don't even know why y'all killing time. I can't do nothing that the Most High God didn't say do. Then he said, all right, hold on. Let me go see what God said. Most High God, this time he told them, go ahead and go with him. But if your butt go, you only say what I tell you to say. Right? So let's see what happened now. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. So he ended up going. He took his donkey. He got his butt on a good foot and he went ahead and went. Because the Most High God told him, you go, but only say what I told you. That. So far, obedient to the Most High God. Seemed very strict. Very, you know what I'm saying, on top of it. You know what I'm saying? Obedient to the Most High God. All right? Fast forward, though. You look at the book. Go grab a whole We got to go, go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 12. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12. <clears throat> and to the angel of the congregation in Pergamos write, These things says he which has the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thy dwell, even where Satan's seat is. 
and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of who? Balaam. What's doctrine mean? Teaching the way. Teaching. All right. You hold the teaching of Balaam. Well, who did what? Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. He taught the king to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. How did he do that? To eat things sacrificed unto idols. And to he taught us to eat stuff that's sacrificed unto idols. What else? And to commit fornication. And he taught us to commit fornication. So what was the stumbling block? Us eating stuff sacrificed to idols and fornication. <clears throat> right? So we look at it from what we read so far, it looked like Balaam was strict. But if we kept reading through the story, you'll see he went up. He actually said everything that God told him to say. He blessed the people. Right? They wanted him to curse the people. He ended up blessing the people because that's what God told him to say. All that said and done, it looked like everything was good. But he turned. Right? And then the whole outlook of how God looks at him <coughs> completely is different. Right? Because at the end of it, just like the book say right here, he gave wicked counsel. He taught him. He was like, listen, I can't curse the people. Just imagine how I go, right? I'm trying to curse the people, trying to curse the people. But God tells me I got to bless them. So I bless them, I bless them, I bless them. I do everything God say. But you can imagine like a backdoor conversation afterwards. Man, I wanted you to curse them. And you ended up blessing them for me. You can just kind of imagine that thing. He looked like, man, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't, if God blessed them, I can't curse them. That's what God, I can't do nothing that God told me not to do. So then, you know, so you can imagine Balak, he probably asked the question, okay, so, I mean, if I wanted to have them cursed, how would I get this done? And that's probably where Balaam started teaching them. All right, because the book said he taught them. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Now, if they sin, most I God ain't got no business blessing them. Most like God ain't going to rock with nothing that's sin. So if they mess around, start eating such sacrifice to idols and fornicating, we might have a problem. And it's at that moment, no matter how righteous Balaam was, no matter how strict he was following this word, that's what we can learn from. We can be on it, on it, on it, on it, on it, doing what we're supposed to be doing. That thing look right. We gain a name for ourselves. People look at it and be like, oh, T, he don't do nothing that the most high God say don't do. Then we end up putting a stumbling block in front of our brothers. Right? And that'll be the thing that causes us to go. And guess what's going to happen? At that point, how much of all our righteousness and all that stuff you think the most high God looking at? None of it. Grab from me uh, Ezekiel 18. Hold we got still. We still going back to numbers. Uh, we don't have to hold uh, revelations. But let's grab Ezekiel chapter 19. 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. Verse 19. Is verse 19 what I want? No. Uh -huh. No. Verse 25. It's Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 25. Watch what the book says. Yeah, you say the way of the Lord is not equal. Yeah, you say the way, the way of the Lord ain't fair. That's what you're trying to say. Equal. When you say equal, you saying fair. You say the word, word <coughs> excuse me, the way of the Lord ain't fair. Keep going. Here now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are uh -huh. not your ways unequal? He said, y'all ways is the way that's unfair. All right, keep going. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness. If, a, if you righteous and you turn away from your righteousness, what else? And commits iniquity. And then you sin like Balaam did. What? And die in them. And then you end up dying that way. You notice he throw that in there. For right? His, for his iniquity that he has done. So you he, die in sin. What else? For his iniquity that he has done shall he die. Uh-huh. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. He said, but you wicked, you turn away from your wickedness and you do what's right. You gonna mess around and be saved. Keep going. Because he considers and turns away from all his transgressions that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Uh-huh. Yet says the house How many of, of his transgressions did he turn away from? All of them. Most of them? All of them. I mean, just a couple? All of them. I mean, the hardest ones? All his transgressions. He said he turned away from all them things? All I got something for you. 
Keep going. Yes, says the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. Uh-huh. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Mm -hmm. Are not your ways unequal? Mm-hmm. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Yeah. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Mm -hmm. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? He said, what? I don't have no pleasure? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God. He said, I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. That's why I turn yourselves and live ye. All right. So when we look at Balaam, Balaam, man, righteous, 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 doing that thing right. All right. At the very end of it, he is like, you know what? Mm, I'm going to do that thing a little differently. Let me show y'all how to put a stumbling block in front of the Israelites. Because all the king wanted, he just wanted the people to be cursed. And Balaam's like, I can't put a curse on them. <coughs> what I can do is I can tell you how to put them in a position where they have cursed themselves. I can't say no curse on them. Right? Most high God didn't rock with that. And guess what? He died that way. Grab uh grab numbers. Numbers um 32. 31. Numbers 31 verse 8. It's numbers chapter 31. And look at verse 8. Right? <clears throat> and they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain, namely oh. Evi, and Rechem, and Zer, and Ur, and Reba, five kings of Midian, Balaam also, the son of Beor. Who? Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones and took the spoil of all their cattle. Look at it. So we took, so we got the kings of Midian. Midian, so just, just so we're going to go back and try to read some of this. But Midian was mixed in with the Moabites. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to go back and get it, but Midian was a son of Abraham. So they just like our people too. <coughs> right? So they, they was one of the sons of Abraham. So Midian, the people of Midian, was mixed in with the Moabites. They all hanging out together. All of them were scared of us coming through and making some havoc, right? They got together. After all this stuff was said and done, after they, they caused us to sin and all that stuff by causing us to stumble, Most High God said, get they butts. Get them all. So we start getting them. We start killing all they men. We kept the women, yeah. right? We kept the children. Yeah. So we brought them all in, and we brought them to Moses. Watch what Moses say. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones and took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods. Uh-huh. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt and all their god all their goodly castles with fire. All right? And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both the men and of beasts, both of men and of beasts. Uh-huh. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil to Moses. They brought it all to Moses. And what, watch what Moses said. And Eliezer the priest. Uh-huh. And unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan, near Jericho. Mm-hmm. And Moses and Eliezer the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. Mm -hmm. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the hosts. Moses was wroth. In other words, Moses was angry. He was furious. Right? What else? With the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto them, Have you saved all the women alive? He said, Have y'all saved all the women alive? Y'all saved the women alive? Moses like, What's wrong with y'all? Listen to why Moses said that. Behold, these cursed the children of Israel through the counsel of ba Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the manner of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Moses said... These the same women that we got caught up with. Right? So that's what Balaam did. He said, you want to you wanna get these boys? This is what you do. Go ahead and stretch your little women out there. <clears throat> Make sure they bring their gods with them. Make sure they bring some sacrifices. If you put the women out there, these boys will sacrifice with these women. And they'll commit a sin before God. So when it came down for us to take their land, guess who we saved? Moses said, y'all but crazy. The women got to go too. So he made it kill all the women. 
Mm-hmm. Right? All the women, all the women that 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 had been with a man, he made a killer. So if, except for the virgins, if it was a virgin, then we can keep them. But any women that's been with a man, they have to go. And the right? males are the little ones. Huh? And the males of the little ones. No, I don't think so. Yeah. That's what it say? Yep. Read that there. But all the women. Okay. I think I think that's saying kill all the women. All the women, children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman that has known a man by lying with him. Yeah, so you gotta kill all the males. Yeah. Alright? <clears throat> all the young males, you kill them. You know what I'm saying? But you you the only ones you keeping is the, the young women who, who who virgins. That's the only thing you keep. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else gotta die. You know what I'm saying? So the Most High God, he was serious. He was looking like, y'all ain't about to stumble again. Or Moses, rather. He said, Moses, y'all ain't about to stumble again. Get rid of all of them. <laughs> they sound funny. You know what I'm saying? But get rid of all of them, right? And that's what we look at. That's the carefulness that we that we operated with, right? We tried to make sure everything was done correctly. Let's grab back, go into, well, actually, go to Numbers chapter 23. This is some of the stuff we kind of skipped over. I just wanted to go to the end of it so you can kind of see where where Balaam went wrong at first. <coughs> then we'll kind of go back and we'll kind of look at all the stuff that Balaam did right, just so we can kind of kind of remind ourselves that not to get caught up in our own righteousness, right? Not to get caught up in when I'm doing well, I'm doing the right thing, I'm doing like, like we gotta always gotta keep it in our mind. At any point, we could be vulnerable to somebody leading us astray, somebody putting us, tempting us, and putting us in a position that. We'll, you know what I'm saying, we'll do something we ain't supposed to do. If we keep that mind and say, you know what, I got to constantly add and constantly add and constantly add to what I'm doing, constantly add more love, more righteousness, more uh, more learning, you know what I'm saying, just constantly, constantly add on to it, then we'll never fall. That's what Peter told him. Right? This is uh, Numbers chapter 23, verse 1. And Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars. And prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. Mm-hmm. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar and a bullock and a ram. Mm-hmm. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by the burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me. Mm-hmm. And whatsoever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a high place. He went to where? A high place. Notice where he went. He went to a high place, the book said. Right? That's important. He went to a high place. What else? And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus shall you speak. All right, so he put a word on his mouth. He said, Return unto Balak, and you're going to say this. So Balaam go on back to Balak, and watch this. And he returned unto him, and he and, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram, Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. Mm-hmm. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? He said, How can I curse the person that God ain't cursed? That's crazy. Or All right. how, how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Mm-hmm. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Mm-hmm. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Mm-hmm. Who can count the dust of Jacob in the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let me last end be like his. Let my last end be like his. All right? So he goes on to give him a blessing. Balak don't like that. Balak was expecting a curse. So Balak's sitting there, watch what he said. And Balak said unto Balaam, what has you done to me? He said, what have you done to me? Right? What else? I took thee to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them. All together. Right? He said, you mess around and bless him. I thought you were going to curse these boys. Right? Let's hear about it. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord has put in my mouth? Mm Mm-hmm. And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place. All right. And where thou may see them. Skip on over to uh, chapter chapter 24, verse, uh, let me verse 10. It's chapter 24, verse 10. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. All right, so Balak getting mad. He's like, man, you keep blessing these boys. I'm asking you to curse them. All right? So he smote his hands together. You know what I'm saying? Like that. He said, man, you asking what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Keep going. And Balak said unto Balaam, 
I call thee to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them these three times. Mm -hmm. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. Uh -huh. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which thou sent unto me, saying, If Balak would have given me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord. All right, so he, he Balaam reminded him, like, I already told you I wasn't going to be able to say anything outside of what God told me to say. Right, Balaam already told him, man. He's like, don't don't you remember when I said that to your messengers? Keep going. If Balak would have given me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own mind. Mm -hmm. But what the Lord said, that will I will speak. And now behold, I go unto my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. Watch this. Now he's talking about the what days? Latter days. That means it's the end. Right? Watch this. A lot of people miss this. And he took up his parable and said... Our Hebrew brother don't know nothing about this. Watch this. And he took up his parable and said to Balaam, the son of Beor, mm -hmm. hath said, The men whose eyes are open hath said, He has said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which mm -hmm. saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trench. Mm -hmm. But having his eyes open, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. I don't know who he could be talking about. And shall smite the corners of Moab, and shall destroy all the children of Sheth. Mm -hmm. And Edom shall be a possession. He's talking about Yahushua. Yahushua said he, Yahushua's going to come back, and he's going to do some damage to these people. All these people surrounding our land, all these people that's over there hanging out, chilling, he said he's going to do some damage <laughs> to these people when he get back. Let's keep going. And Edom shall be a possession. He See, said, Edom going to be a possession. We can read about that in Isaiah. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. Seir is a part of Edom. Keep going. And Israel shall do valiantly. Mm -hmm. Out of Jacob shall, he, shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remains of the city. Mm -hmm. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Mm-hmm. And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and you put thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted until Asher shall carry thee away captive. Asher is going to end up carrying away the, the, the Kenites captive? So a Asher, I mean, I'm sorry, the Kenites, the Kenites uh, are people that kind of came up with us. So we, we came into the wilderness and they was actually kind of with us. They, you know, and they ended up treating us fairly and treating us nicely. So all through our history, when we read into Kings, Second Kings, the Kenites is kind of mixed in with us. All right, they kind of like, kind of like our people, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they come from the Midianites, and so they, they, uh, they are people that come from Moses' father-in-law's people. You know what I'm saying? So they all descendants of Moses' father-in-law. So they were raised with us. They end up going through us in history. So in our history, there was a group called the Assyrians. They came and they picked us up. And the Assyrians are the same as Asher. Mm -hmm. So when they say until Asher carries you away, they were with us. They got carried away when we got carried away by the Assyrians. So that happened. Keep going. And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim. And ships going to come from where? The coast of Chittim. Coast of Chittim. Hmm. I wonder where these ships gonna go. The Isles of the Gentiles is Chittim. And shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up and went. It says it's gonna to afflict place. Asher and afflict who? Eber. Eber. Guess who Eber is? Hebrew. All right? That's who Hebrews come from. Eber. All right? Same name. Right, Hebrew is like a descendant of, of Eber. Right? So Eber was one of Shem's sons. That's where all of us came from. That was like Abraham's grandfather. Right? Eber. So when he says Eber, he's talking about Hebrews. That happened. So if you look at history, you got the Assyrians came. Then after that, the Babylonians took over. After the Babylonians, who came? The Greeks. Greece. And after the Greeks, the Romans. And those two groups are all Chittim. Chittim was an island people. So if you look at like like Greece and Rome, all that stuff break out in the, uh, especially Greece territory, they break out in the little islands. And 
And that's who came over and took us over. All right? Called all this stuff out. This is, a lot of people don't even, a lot of people miss this when Balaam said all this. Called all this stuff out in Genesis. Very first book called it out, and it happened just like he said it. All right? Parts of it still going to happen. All right? We look at this stuff. He talk about a, a scepter from Jacob. Who is he talking about? Yahushua. Whole book talk about Yahushua. Whole book talk about Even when we read, we look at it, we didn't notice that, that Balaam is Yahushua. Right? Grab Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> Y'all might have missed it, but each time Balaam took up a word, what did he say he was speaking in? The parable of the Lord. Parable. Who we know to speak in parable? Y'all sure. All right. As soon as, it, as soon as he got to speaking, I don't know why I called it out like that. He said he took up what? The bird. He said he took up this parable. <clears throat> I don't know. Nobody else that be talking about parable. Oh, y'all sure. Watch this. This is, uh, this is Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Watch what the book said. Yahushua being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan. He returned from Jordan. And was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Didn't you didn't you see where we was over there and we took over all those people? Where did it say we was near? Jordan. Close to what? Jericho it said. Alright, keep going. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. Uh huh. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Uh huh. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Uh huh. And Yahshua answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Uh huh. Watch this. And the devil taking him up. Into he took him high, where? Into a high mountain. He took him to a high mountain. You remember when Balak was going? He went. So Balak, he wanted him, the king, he wanted him to curse the people. And Balaam said, I can't curse the people. I can only say what God wants me to say. And you remember where, where the king took him? To a high place. And look at what Satan trying to tempt him to do. He said he took him to a high mountain. He took him to a high place. Let's see what happened next. And showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. And he showed unto him what? The kingdoms of the world in a moment. And you remember when, ba- when Balaam went up to the high place, Balak wanted him to see all of Israel. He said, you can see him from here. Now curse him where you can see him. He tried to show him to him, but he couldn't curse him. And guess what? Yahushua said, mm, no, nah, I can't do it. I can't worship you. He resisted that temptation. Grab Matthew chapter 5 for me real quick. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. A lot of people didn't know y'all were sure with Balaam. <coughs> and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples... He went up into a what? Into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. He started saying, what? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what else? Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And what else? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I mean, he went up to a high place, and he just started blessing the people. They probably standing around, they like, I don't know what made him just crawl, go up to that darn mountain and just start blessing everybody. I know why. He had to become Balaam. How are you going to do it without fulfilling the book? Balaam did it, how he not going to do it? <clears throat> he went to the top, he said, well, I got to go somewhere high and start blessing the people. That's the only way that thing worked. Balaam did it. All right? We look at the thing, the, thing, the man spoke in parables, right? If you look at, at, at Balaam's name even, right? He was the son of who? Uh, P or? Baal. Baal. Right? Balaam was the son of Baor. If you look at that, it means lamp. So that means he's the son of light. When Balaam, when Balaam got ready to go and follow the men and go and go see Balak, what did he ride on? A dog. That don't sound familiar? 
grab for me. Grab uh, grab Matthew chapter twenty one. It's Matthew chapter twenty one, verse one. First thing he did, hopped on his donkey. He said, "Okay, I'll follow you on down." Go ahead and take me to Balak. I, 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 I say what only what God can say. In Matthew chapter 21. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were to come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then said Yahshua, sent Yahshua two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you. And straightway ye shall find a donkey tied and a colt with her, Loose them and bring them unto me. And if a man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. He had to go get his donkey. <clears throat> How's he going to do it? Balaam had a donkey. He had to make sure, I have my donkey. That's Balaam. The whole book talks about him. All right? As we look through these things, the whole book talks about the man. Every time we see somebody in it, it's Yahushua. All right? We look at it, and Yahushua is showing us how to do things the right way. He blessed the people, but he never put a stumbling block in front of the people. Right? He showed them, this is how it should have been done. This is how, this is how it should have been done. This is how we should do. That's the mind that we got to keep. Right? We can continue on. We can be righteous. We can be doing all the right things. But at any moment, if we don't keep that same vigor, if we don't keep that same energy that we started with, we'll mess around and slip. Fall off. And if we die in that like Balaam did, you notice the most high God said, go ahead and get Balaam. For the stuff he did for your people, go ahead and get Balaam. They got all the kings of Midian, oh, and Balaam too. All right? For the stuff that, that we do, if we die in that, that's it for us. That's done. The book said if he die in that sin, then he going to die. All right? But if a man who wicked turn away from his wickedness and be righteous, then he'll live. Right? His soul would be saved in that <clears throat> sense. That's all we're looking for. All right? That's all we're trying to teach the people. We want to teach people how to save their soul. We ain't trying to teach nobody nothing crazy. I mean, unless you think I'm telling you don't cheat on your wife, it's crazy. Unless I'm telling you uh, don't fornicate with these women. You know what I'm saying? Keep yourself to one woman. Give these women everything they deserve. Unless you think that's crazy. Yeah, I tell you, stop all that cussing. Control your tongue. You see all these teachers out here, these people that call themselves teachers of God's word. Every other word out their mouth is a cuss word. And they think that thing okay. These Hebrew teachers. Even some of these Christian pastors, you talk to them behind closed doors. They get to using the N-word. Talk to a couple of these pastors, behind, uh, these pastors uh, behind closed doors. I guess they think I'm young and I'm comfortable. You know what I'm saying? They can start using the N-word in front of me. You know, they ain't nothing. I ain't listening to nothing y'all talk about. These Hebrew dudes, same way. I try to watch these videos, you know what I'm saying? They be like Facebook Live arguing with one another. You know what I'm saying? I'll be watching. I'll be like, oh, yeah, you got some good point. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point. All of a sudden, start cussing. Start running their mouth. Like, ain't none of y'all. Y'all y'all killing time. I don't, kill it. I don't always leave it. Y'all killing time. Y'all killing time. I be wanting to get on the video at first. You know what I'm saying? I be wanting to get on it. Oh, man, let me jump in this thing. You know what I'm saying? Let me help y'all out. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might be on to something. I'll be looking at y'all. They get the cut, and I'll be like, nah, we good. I'll hit you in the inbox. The only thing I hit them in the inbox, I'll be like, you need to stop all that cussing. You might get somewhere you stop all that cussing. They don't want to talk to me. I tell them, I put it out there, I tell all they followers too. If anybody you think teaching you the word of God and they got a bad mouth, they cussing, you might as well keep it moving. Keep it moving. Don't kill your time listening to these people. They're going to lead you somewhere you're not supposed to be. I don't care how good they sound. I don't care how smart, or smart they are. It's one thing the book going to tell you very clearly. A man got to control his tongue. Right? You don't control that tongue. That thing crazy. You can't control what you're saying. That's crazy. That don't make no sense. Ain't no filter supposed to be coming out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna get uh, ain't no dirty water gonna be in a fresh spring. That's clear in the book. Clear in the book, right? That's what we look at. If that's what's crazy to y'all, that we telling people to live right, <clears throat> y'all the one. You know what? I'm crazy for the Most High God. We can do that thing. You know what I'm saying? If they can't tell us nothing that we're doing wrong. They can't. Right? Everything they going they gonna say we just too right. Right? Y'all take it too serious. Y'all too strict. God ain't worried about all that. That's the only thing they gonna say. They ain't gonna never say, oh, 
you doing it wrong. No, they can't. They just don't say it's okay for them to do it wrong. Don't even make darn sense. Any questions? 